Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are Poll on the Call podcast. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. <laughs> and today we are so excited. There's some thunder and lightning going on. I don't know if you heard that, but we are here with Claudia Renee of Team yeah. Base Works. We are so excited. <laughs> hello, hello. Gia. <laughs> Thank you so much for meeting with us today to tell us a little bit more about yourself and your pole journey and your coaching and all of the other good stuff. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Um, awesome. So we'll dive right into something, hopefully simple and quick, not quick. Um, what started your pole journey? How did you start pole dancing? Yeah, so it's kind of a funny story. I was 21 years old. My birthday was coming up or my 21st birthday was coming up and I had rented a party bus for me and all my friends and it had a pole in it. And my friends thought it was a good idea to get me a pole class the same day of the party bus so that I would be prepared to work the pole all night. And they're like, well, you got to know how to use it. So we might as well go as a group, learn some tricks. And I was kind of apprehensive, you know, just like, I think anybody who doesn't, you know, have a dance background and is about to go into their first dance class and it happens to be pole dancing. And um, I was a little bit nervous, but I felt a little bit more at ease because I was with a group of my friends. And I kid you not, I touched the pole and I was like, this is who I am now. (laughs) I was so in love, like immediately, you know, and I wasn't good. I saw the challenge and I knew it was going to be really difficult to get good at pole dancing, but I also was just, I don't know. I felt this sense of excitement and being able to express my sensuality in a way that I never had before in a really safe space full of women who accepted everyone. And it was something I had never experienced before. So I think I was both addicted to like the mental part of it, the feeling that I got like deep within and also the physical aspect of how difficult it actually was. So took my first dance class, worked the pole all night on the party bus and woke up and literally couldn't move the next day because I was so sore. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Wait, so tell tell us more about this party bus with the pole on it. Where (laughs) Where are these? Where did they go? I don't know. Back in 2009, they were like a hot commodity. <laughs> that sounds so, so much fun. But I also amazing. love that you, you touched the pole and you were like, this is my new life. <laughs> <laughs> I knew from that moment, I wasn't sure how it was going to fit into my life, but I knew that I wanted to continue training in some capacity. Uh, where was the, the first class that you took? It was in Frisco, Texas, which is about 30 minutes away from Dallas, Texas. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a studio called The Girls' Room. They had three locations throughout the state. And um, yeah, it was like the only studio in Texas at the time. And um, it was all run by strippers. It was amazing. Everything about it was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love how like, and you took the class on the same day that, that your party was. So yeah, in all that and, same day, your entire pole career started. <laughs> all in the same day. And I'm telling you, I was like going upside down, throwing myself into positions I was not ready for and felt like I got hit by a truck the following morning. <laughs> oh, I, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the best 21st birthday party <laughs> it really was oh. oh and then I forgot to mention we spent the 21st birthday at the strip club <laughs> ah, yeah. that's perfect right <laughs> like you have to after all that had to I know. <laughs> I love it. so then you said you didn't have any previous dance background yeah I didn't you know I did a little bit of gymnastics when I was super young But it was more for my parents to just like get my energy out and just have me like run around for a couple hours. That was the only purpose. I never got serious about it. I never really trained on a regular basis. Um, So that's really it. I probably did gymnastics for maybe six months when I was really young, like four, five, six years old. And then I did volleyball for years. And that was my only, only movement background. Yes, love volleyball. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not sure it served me in any way as a pole dancer, but you know, understanding the way that your body <laughs> works and your muscles work was definitely helpful. Yes, I love yeah. that. Yeah. But there I'm was just <laughs> <laughs> only because I grew up in Holyoke, where it was created. So they like that oh, yeah, is yeah. all my move. That is all my movement background too. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> I love right, that. I always think it's so cool when um, pole dancers don't have any dance background, and then they end up being right. such amazing movers and dancers. <laughs> like both of you are so it's oh, awesome and it, and it goes really to show is. you that you you can like come from any background and still pole dance that mm -hmm. right there I I tell all of my students because as you probably know as a pole instructor and studio owner you work with a lot of different people and most of the time when they come in they're so nervous to step in that door for the first time especially if they don't have a background to pull from and I think it's really important to remind them on a regular basis that so many of us came from zero background and pole dancing is just really inclusive in that way. Um, you know, you can just dance around the base of your pole and feel sexy. You can do tricks if you're more acrobatic. There are just so many options when it comes to pole dancing and it really is for everyone. So it's good to remind our students. Yeah, so truly is. I love what you said, what you said that. Yeah. All right. Is it my turn again? <laughs> I feel like we just... <laughs> I have lots, <laughs> lots of questions. <laughs> yeah. um, so, oh my goodness. I have like a question, but that's jumping too far ahead. Have you done and like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you, I know you have like amazing performance and competition experience. So w could you elaborate on that? Um, talk about some performance versus some competitions you've probably participated in. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, my competition career, because I feel like it's very separate from my teaching career, my performing career. Um, I think it started in 2010 and probably ended in like 2016, 2017, something like that. Um, I'll be honest, I never enjoyed competing. It was really stressful for me. Um, I was really shy growing up and just being in front of an audience and bearing my soul and then being judged on every single move was like really hard for me to perform and actually enjoy it when I was competing. Um, I'm also just not like a super competitive person. So it just felt weird for me. It kind of like took the love away from pole dancing for me, but I did it for so long because I was under the impression that in order to get recognition in the pole community and for people to like know who I am, it was important to compete and you know, try to earn titles and do that whole thing. And and I do feel like there is some truth to that, at least when I was building my, my pole dancing career as like a traveling artist. Um, but it's kind of funny. The first pole competition I ever did was six months after my first class. And I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified, but I had this incredible coach. Her name's Amy Henderson. She is I mean, this phenomenal woman who's still very present in our pole community. And she was like a drill sergeant and she did not give me a choice. She was like, look, I see your passion. I see your drive. I see how much you love pole dancing. You're doing this competition. It's called Miss Pole Dance, Texas. Um, and you're going to do it. There's no choice. You've got a couple months to prepare. I will help you. And she's been a performer her entire life. So she really brought me out of my shell and she has a very much like showgirl style. So she kind of taught me that way. Like think, think old school, like Australian style, you know, where they're just like big and grand and their lines are long and they're really expressive. That's the kind of training that I got for my first pole competition. And it really broke me out of this like sheltered shy shell that I was just, you know, buried in and brought me out and I mean, it, it really did catapult me into this like new life of feeling more confident, feeling good about expressing my sensuality, not feeling shame for expressing my sensuality, you know, dancing in these giant pleasers and just feeling so powerful because not a lot of people knew how to do what I was doing. So I just felt this sense of accomplishment and excitement and um, just originality, you know? So, and then I continued to compete for years, um, 
my first national competition was in 2014, I believe. And it was with a pulse Sport organization. It was when level four was their like pro category. And that's actually what moved me to LA because I competed. I got recognized by a studio owner here in LA and uh, she asked me to come and move here and be the head instructor at her studio. So I don't regret my competition career, even though I kind of talk poorly about it because it just wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but it did wonders for my career. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That was so honest. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so <laughs> interesting. I actually didn't even know that you did any competitions. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a lot. I did. I don't know if you all remember um, Miss Pole Dance America run by Alethea Austin. I did that one. Um, that was probably my most infamous performance because I stabbed myself in the leg on stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. On purpose or by accident? <laughs> uh, definitely by accident. And it was with like a four inch, no, not four inch. It was like an eight inch serrated edge knife went straight into my leg about four inches oh. away from my carotid artery on my right leg. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it was, wow. it was crazy. And somehow I pushed through, I didn't feel any pain. I was like bleeding out on stage and just kept performing and I think that's when I retired my my competition career. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. Wow. That's like the craziest story I've ever heard. <laughs> I was I'm just so some context. Okay. I'm glad to <laughs> and some context just so you all know why I was on stage with a giant butcher knife. Yeah. I was playing. <laughs> I'm like, by the way, I know I was like, was, was it just there? <laughs> it was like just right into my leg. <laughs> I was playing the character Dexter and you well, know like for anyone who's not familiar with Dexter he like kills bad guys essentially is like yeah. the long story short and um I had oh. three poles on stage and two of the poles were connected with um plastic wrap because that's how he like you know contains the blood for his victims this sounds so gross <laughs> I love <laughs> Dexter I, I love this one. keep going <laughs> <laughs> I was going through a bit of a dark time during this performance, yeah. but <laughs> there was a point where I needed to break the plastic wrap to release the two poles. I had one pole that was available, two poles that were connected, and I was so in character in the moment that I grabbed the knife wrong and went like this and then straight into my leg. <laughs> And I remember seeing the stage monitor. I have really good peripheral vision. My vision this way sucks, but this way is good. And I could see her in the corner of my eye and she goes, and I just kind of looked at her and I nodded like, I'm okay. And then I continued my performance bleeding everywhere. And it's just so wild how adrenaline takes over and you feel absolutely no pain because the second those curtains closed, I couldn't walk. I was in so much pain. I'm like, I think I need to go to the hospital immediately. <laughs> oh, that's so but I don't incredible. regret it. I don't regret it. It was honestly one of my favorite times on stage. I was very much in character and enjoyed every second. <laughs> wow. I almost died, but it, I was most authentic ever. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> I didn't die, so that's good. We're good. We live to tell the tale. <laughs> I kind of want to ask if there a video about <laughs> There is. There is. <laughs> there is a video. If you look up Claudia Renee, Miss Pole Dance America, um, but it's really hard to see when it happens, but you'll see when I cut through the plastic, if you look really closely, you see the knife go into my leg. That sounds like a, <laughs> such a cool thing to do though, but like to mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> that was not the thing to mess up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even imagine like the cleanup after like t for the next polar to come on. Like, <laughs> yeah, my parents were watching via live stream and they were texting me afterwards and they said, why are they mopping the floor? <laughs> I was like, and I just uh, sent them a photo and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's because it's my blood. <laughs> my blood. It's my blood. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's quite a competition experience <laughs> in history for sure. But so... And you, you said you had to come out of your shell to, to perform. And I really like how you said that you came up with um, like a persona 
Because I think yeah. that is really helpful sometimes for for a lot of us who are really shy and like yeah. like in sexy class too. Like when we come in there, like it's good to like pretend. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And it also just helps remove any outside distractions. Like let's say you had a really shit day and you go to a pole dancing class. If you can just emerge into like your alter ego, if you will, then you can kind of leave all that other stuff outside. And I had to learn to do that as a pole instructor, because Mm -hmm. if I had a bad day, I wasn't about to project that onto my students, you know, energetically, that's not what I wanted to do as a teacher. So I learned to just kind of step into that alter ego in a different space, leave everything else at the door. And, you know, then I started incorporating that into competition because they made me so nervous and stressed and full of anxiety that if I could just pretend to be someone else for a couple of minutes, then I always had a better performance that way. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And now for performing, like you're out there eating fire. (laughs) And you know, what's crazy about that is that it's easier than pole dancing for me. It really is like, there are so many factors. It it sounds what it sounds so wild, but there are so many factors when it comes to pole dancing, like your skin has to be perfect. You can't be slippery. You know, if the temperature, if it's too dry, then for me, I'm going to slip. If it's a little too humid, then I might slip too. It's just so many factors have to be like perfect in order to have like the most fantastic run through on the pole. And with fire, I've learned to like manipulate and control the element that I can kind of just work through anything and don't have to rely on, you know, sticky grip or (laughs) things like that. So when people ask, they're like, which is harder, fire dancing and fire eating or pole dancing? (laughs) Pole dancing. Pole dancing. Pole dancing. Yes. It's so much harder. (laughs) See, I'm so afraid of fire. I so admire like how beautiful you make it look because I would literally be like, please don't get the fire on me. (laughs) Oh, don't get it twisted. I (laughs) literally had to like touch it, not even touch it, get it this close to my face and pulled it back probably 150 times before it even touched my tongue. I was terrified, terrified. But I'm one of those people that like, when I see something that I want to learn, like I won't stop until, until I learn it, even if it scares the living hell out of me, I will, I will keep doing it until it doesn't scare me. <laughs> That's so amazing. Well, do you, Thank and so you, you perform the fire eating and, and do you still perform pole or uh, do you balance them both or? So, you know, there are just not a lot of, at least where I live. And right now I'm splitting my time between Vegas and LA. I'm actually in Vegas more than I am in LA these days. And there's just not a lot of pole dancing opportunities that seem to pay the way that I think they should pay. And it's really unfortunate. Um, The only high paying pole gigs that I've ever gotten are like through, you know, corporate events. And when you're doing a corporate event, they want you to be covered and being covered in pole dancing doesn't really mix well. So I don't do a lot of pole performing. Um, I would love to. I mean, it's my favorite thing in the whole world is to just get on stage and perform um, without being judged, (laughs) without being on a competition stage. But um, yeah, there's just not a lot of opportunity. So I'm mostly doing um, fire now and maybe every once in a while, a lollipop performance, which is, you know, kind of pole dancing. (laughs) Right. The lollipop is an easy way to sneak in the pole to like the corporate events. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's not a pole, but it is a pole. It's acceptable. There's a circle at the Love top it. that you all know in the circus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. It's not as offensive. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I, we talked to a whole, um, many pollers um, who, who say the same thing. We all wish that there was more performance opportunities for us. So maybe we should like yeah. think of something to change that. Somebody out there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, how long um, did you start uh, before you started teaching? So <laughs> this is going to sound a little crazy. So I'll give a backstory after I answer that question. I started teaching about three months after my first class, but. At the time, 
you know, the most advanced thing that people were doing was an iron X, which still today is extremely advanced. But as far as the like combos and the intricacies of that pole dancing has created over the last, you know, decade plus that I've been in this community, I mean, the advancement of pole is really, really fascinating. And at that time when I started teaching, it was very basic. It's like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to walk around the pole and like whip your hair and do a fireman spin around the pole. And I was kind of thrown into it because the studio that I took my first class at didn't have a lot of instructors and they saw how passionate I was and they really took a chance on me and wanted to give me an opportunity. And the person who really pushed me to do that also saw like how shy I was. And she was like, look, if you are a teacher, you have no choice. You can't be shy. You've got to break out of that shell. So I'm really thankful I was pushed in that direction. But do I think I should have been instructing at that time? Probably not. <laughs> but I also was really determined to understand dance anatomy, to understand the body, to give proper cues, to keep my students from getting injured. So I really did dive into, you know, um, training with the best in the industry spending what little money I had to go to like, you know, body and pole and train with the most famous instructors in the world and go to pole camps and take the expert certification so that I could, you know, learn as much as I could. And so, you know, I really did my due diligence so that I could be a good instructor for my students, but it was definitely a learning process. <laughs> I believe it, but you have, from your experience, you have definitely, <laughs> like you went from the student to three months teaching and then just reading your biography. I was like, oh my God, I knew her and I didn't even know it. You're just experienced that you've had and the people you've been able to teach. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy to dive into that so quickly. I look back and I'm like, I would never <laughs> let one of my new students who doesn't have a dance background teach after three months. Like it's there are so many injuries that can happen in pole dancing, as you all know. And it's so important to understand anatomy, especially dance anatomy, because it's very specific and, um, you know, do right by your students. Yeah. Well, look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so do, um, do you teach in person and online or do you just teach mostly online? Um, and when did you start team-based work? Yeah, so great questions. Um, I primarily teach online now. When the pandemic hit, I started doing like free Instagram live classes because I just wanted to give back to the community for a little while and I knew everyone was just stuck at home. I also knew a lot of people didn't have access to my teaching and I wanted to, you know, expand my teaching to people around the world and, you know, see if it resonated with them. So I did... I don't know if I remember correctly, maybe like a dozen Instagram live classes and was like, Hey, if you guys want to tip me great, if you can't, that's fine too. Just come and join me. And it was really successful. And, um, so then I launched team base work in April of 2020, which was perfect timing. I had been working on it slowly for about a year. I just was hesitant on launching it. Cause I wasn't sure if that, you know, online audience was there. I've been teaching online actually since like 2012 and doing privates with people around the world. And um, so I already had experience with teaching online, but just wasn't sure about who would be interested. So I kind of took a chance, launched it in April, 2020, and it was a hit and it's just kind of expanded and progressed since then. It started off as me just doing collaborations with other artists. Cause again, I wanted to, you know, just try to connect with people in a time where we weren't able to connect with anybody. So I would reach out to artists that I really enjoyed and ask them if they wanted to create choreography with me and then teach it online together. And we would just split the profits. So we started out with that. And then I started just doing all of my classes online. Once I realized that this pandemic wasn't going anywhere. And then, um, from there, I started bringing on instructors just to teach their own solo class once, you know, the business was kind of running and, and bringing in a large audience. So at this point, I teach maybe one in-person class and it's a floor work class here in LA per month because I do want to still connect with, you know, the in-person community. It Nothing is like 
nothing compares to teaching in person, you know, so I try to do that at least once a month. But um, I'm also since I'm going back and forth between cities a lot, it's much easier for me to just remain online. And it also allows me to connect to so many people around the world that otherwise I wouldn't be able to connect with. And, you know, my my main goal for team based work when I launched it was trying to intersect the dance world with the pole dancing world. And what I mean by that is with dancers, they can have, you know, a big empty room and fit a hundred plus people in that room. And so they make a lot more money. And with pole dancers, you know, studios are usually small. They might have three poles, four poles, maybe eight poles if you're lucky. Um, you know, it's really like a labor of love when it comes to owning a studio. So you can't fit as many people. The instructors can't profit as much. So my hope was that, you know, doing this online platform, I can have 50, 60, 75 people in a class and pay my instructors a lot more than they're able to learn in an in-person class. It's just not possible in person having to have an apparatus. So finding that balance of them still teaching their in-person classes, but also having this online space where they can just stay at home, teach for an hour, meet people around the world and, you know, get paid a little bit more in the process. I love it. I definitely taken oh advantage God. of so many of the classes that you've offered. Oh, and I want to say you always like, um, you have such like the best teachers ever too. Like I, and I, you've introduced me to new teachers. Uh, okay. Do you want to name some of the, the instructors that we can take from at team base work? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll name some of the ones who have just consistently been on the platform for a long period of time. Um, Tia Jacks from Canada. She is just the sweetest, most lovely person that you will ever meet. And she's just really encouraging in her classes. We have um, Medusa. She is just beyond <laughs> the way she moves like a snake is just, I mean, goals. Uh, we have Jazzy from Switzerland, who's been a good friend of mine for probably, oh my gosh, like six, seven years we've been working together. I've gone to Switzerland multiple times. She's come to LA multiple times. So I'm so happy to have her on the platform. Um, Esty, um, she is, she's from Mexico. She's also really lovely. Uh, we've brought on a couple new instructors lately. Hennan uh, from Brazil. Uh, we just brought on Dalton from Chicago. We brought in Abby, the raddest Abby on Instagram. Um, from Minnesota. So it's just, you know, I try to, I try to get as much diversity as possible and, you know, pull people from different parts of the world and um, just offer our students as much of a wide range as I possibly can. And I, I, I really love, <laughs> Thank you. I really love the experience of the class too, because like when you take the class, like it's really like you're hanging out with all of the people from all over the world that have come together and also like the instructors so you get to meet them even though like they're so far away and then I yeah. also like that you feature like when we would like tag you <laughs> you feature yes. us which is always <laughs> so fun <laughs> we love it it's about the student as much as it is, as it is about the instructor and you know, I don't want it to seem like it's just, okay, we have a class, take the class. Thank you for coming. You know, I, I just, I want the main reason for us featuring students too, which that reminds me, we need to do student reposts on our Instagram today. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Um, you know, the main reason that we want to feature people is so that like, uh, well, let me back up. I understand that when we post our instructors, a lot of people may get intimidated by their movement. Like when you see Estefania um, move, I mean, her legs just are not connected to her body. You know, they have the most incredible range. And I want people to know that like, it's not a goal to look exactly like that. She has a movement background that allows her to do that. And most people's joints are not going to do that. So, you know, posting somebody else who may have less of a range, but still makes it look just as beautiful is really important for us to see. And, you know, because Instagram is all about posting the best of the best, you know, we get in our heads and we think, you know, well, if mine doesn't look perfect, what's wrong with me? You know, so it's important to show different people's bodies, different people's movement, the way that they digest the information that they're given. And um, yeah, it's kind of the purpose of that. <laughs> Thank you. 
are there any um let me see how is this this is just a question that just like popped into my head are there yeah. what like how would one apply for team-based work like do you search for them? Is there an application process for other pole dancers who might inspire, be inspired to make that a goal of theirs in the future? Yeah. So you mean like bringing instructors on? Yes. Or like if we're, if we want to be on your um, platform or anybody else out there, how would they go about yeah. that? What should they aim for to get noticed by you? Things like that. Yeah, that's a great question. Sorry. I think I'm, you know, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so a lot of the instructors that I brought on were kind of going back to the collaborations that I did for the first year of launching. Um, you know, I, I worked with all of these different artists and the ones that I really connected with and I enjoyed their teaching style and it seemed to like cover a lot of bases. Those are the people that I, I brought on to the team. And now what's happening since, you know, the world is slowly opening up again, a lot of my instructors are starting to travel and teach and they can't teach their classes. So I'm like slowly bringing people on. And a lot of the people that I'm bringing on are, you know, people who've been taking classes on the platform for a long time. Um, you know, people that I just resonate with. I mean, of course that like do really good base work. <laughs> um, and you know, there's not really an application process. It's more word of mouth for me. A lot of my students will be like, Hey, I've taken classes from Dalton and he is incredible. I love his style. He's really funny. You know, he's got a great teaching personality online and I think he'd be great on the platform. So it's really just about listening to our students and what they want and then finding the person that matches their needs. And um, yeah, but I think in the future, as we continue to grow, we're going to need a more strict application process because <laughs> we're going to need people. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, um, of course. I did it. I've heard of your platform before, but didn't know the extent to it. And I think that's such an amazing opportunity and such an inspiring goal for instructors. That's so cool. Thank you. Um, right, like it's a, more of a reach for everyone too. Like like you said, you were, you were like, oh, maybe my style will be well received by people outside of my area. And of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then other people and you introduce people to other, you know, different styles. And then we all grow. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I noticed that also you're going on tour. Yeah, I'm going on <laughs> tour again. Oh my gosh, yeah. the tour that was canceled in 2020. Uh, finally <laughs> happening. <laughs> so, exciting. so exciting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yes, well, I'm going to be going to, I'm starting in Belgium, then Germany, then I'm going to Spain and then back to the same site I came from to Switzerland and then Italy. Spain and Italy are for vacation as of now. Uh, and then Belgium, Germany and Switzerland are where I'm going to be teaching. The touring world is coming back very slowly, especially in Europe. So it's not going to be huge. I'm only teaching at three studios as of right now, but I'm just excited to get back in person and get back to that touring life. It's not something that I want to do often, but you know, maybe two or three little mini tours per year would make me really happy just to stay connected to the in-person community. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this tour. I'm also looking forward to the fact that the last time I toured in Europe, I was just so broke. <laughs> I was like such a struggling pole artist that you know it was like the whole time I was just stressed about like spending any money and now I'm in a little bit more of a comfortable position where I'm like you know what this may not bring me any money it's gonna just be a free vacation and that's okay I'm okay with that I get to connect with people I get to see the world and that's what we're gonna focus on but I'm a little nervous I'm gonna be there for three weeks and I haven't been away from my dog in that long in a very, very, very long time. And I'm really sad about it. I wish I could bring him with me. <laughs> Poor doggy. So I know. <laughs> he'll be okay. Yeah, hopefully he'll be in good hands. <laughs> he will be. <laughs> oh my gosh. So do you, do you make a living doing just pole dancing or do you have anything else you do on the side or? Yeah, so just running my online platform and now doing consistent fire performing in Vegas. So the restaurant that I do fire performing here in LA opened up a location in Vegas and they want dancers 
every day, which is great because the one in LA, I only get maybe like three or four gigs per month. And the one in Vegas, I can go for two weeks and get 12 in two weeks. So I've been doing that just as extra. I'm trying to save for a house because I need to invest in my future. (laughs) I've been having way too much fun for the last 12 years. So (laughs) it's time to buckle down. So just my online platform, you know, and uh, doing in-person privates. I have people who come to my home and do privates and um, my fire performing and that's it. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Living the dream, doing everything you want for work. I love that. (laughs) It only took me a decade, but I am very happy that I stuck to it. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All from that one birthday party (laughs) all from the one birthday party thank you Alex Bailey the person who got me that gift card thank you thank you (laughs) (laughs) yes I already thank you too because I've been so inspired by all of your movement so if it had never been for that one birthday maybe I wouldn't be here even I love it. Thank that. you yeah. so much. Well, your movement is impeccable. When I met you and I danced with you, I was like, oh my God, I'm trying not That's to true. drool <laughs> in my own workshop. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. But yeah, you're um, after taking, because you came to our studio in, um, right in 2018, I think it was. And oh. you just, I know, <laughs> and you just inspired me so much. And I decided that I love um low flow and floor work and base work and all of that too um I didn't really know like that that it was a thing before um you came to us so you opened my eyes (laughs) I love it I mean I think the best thing about base work at least for me personally and a lot of the people that I train is you know not coming from a dance background I actually feel like a dancer you know there's just so much freedom there and you can play and there's so many the options are just endless so I think it just makes me feel like a dancer and when I'm up up the pole I'm still dancing but I feel more like an aerialist and you know it couldn't have been more perfect timing launching the platform when I did because most people don't have the height at their in their homes you know they have like eight nine maybe ten if you're lucky foot poles so it was perfect timing everyone could just chill on the floor and roll around and feel sexy (laughs) Yes. And you have the floor work too. And you had like a couch one too, didn't you? I did. I need to bring that back. I was like, yeah. Mm, couch choreo. Why not? Right? <laughs> I just want to couch. roll around on their couch. <laughs> yes. Just like bust out a whole routine. That's, that's fun. <laughs> we need to bring that back. Thank you for the reminder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that you have experience with quite a few um entertainers <laughs> and, um, like teaching experience can they um do you mind going into that um like yeah. some people you because i was reading your bio and i don't even know if like there's such thing as throwing names out there but i was like holy crap she has really been able to teach like some incredible people do you mind going into that sure you know it was really just by luck and connections and Um, you know, the very first like bigger celebrity that I trained, which was Constance Wu. Um, she's the main character of Crazy Rich Asians. She came to a pole dancing class at um Beast Fun, which is where I was teaching in Hollywood. And I think it was, oh gosh, maybe like 2018, 2019, I can't remember. And she was in a beginner class and she was on like the far pole. And I went up to her and I'm like a really encouraging instructor. So I was like, great job. You know, that was awesome. Okay. Now we're going to like fix this and this. And she's like, don't lie to me. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I see. I see. You need a little bit of a different teaching style. Like you don't need me to coddle you. I I get it. And so she came up to me after class and she's like, Hey, you know, can I have your number? I want to do some private lessons. I have this like acting role coming up. She was so chill and nonchalant about it. And I was like, Oh, cool. You're an actor. Sweet. And she gave me her name. She gave me her number and she left class and everyone was like, Claudia, do you not know who that was? And I was like, no, who was it? And they're like, have you not seen crazy rich Asians? I'm like, I haven't. (laughs) They were all freaking out. They're like, I can't believe Constance Wu was in class because that movie had just released, I think a couple months prior and it was really big. 
And um, so I trained her for um, Hustlers and then she flew me to New York during the filming of Hustlers to just prep her for her scene, which was not in the movie. How sad. I trained her for six months and the scene wasn't even in the movie. I was like, no. <laughs> so sad. But honestly, That's just awful. like it, it was so awful. <laughs> it's like all this time we spent training and you got so good and you didn't even get to show the world. But um, you know, and all the other celebrities that I've trained again was just by luck or connections. Um, the most recent one that I had was Lily Rose Depp and that was really, really cool. She's such an impressive human. She's like 21 years old, so accomplished, so talented, really fast learner, like scary fast. She had never touched a pole and I taught her a routine and two lessons and she mastered everything. And um, she's not really doing pole dancing in the show that she's doing. It's more, um, it was more to just get her in touch with her sensuality because she's paying, playing like a really sexual character and they thought that pole dancing would help her. And I was like, yes, I will definitely train you for that. <laughs> I love that they found a use for pole, for pole training. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I was like, great. I'm so happy that you feel that way about pole dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you so much so for sharing amazing. that. That's awesome. Of course. It's, I, I love how like you didn't know who these stars were, but like. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I didn't even I... know that Johnny Depp had a daughter, to be honest. <laughs> You're like, oh, I've heard that last name before. Yeah. <laughs> too funny. Oh my gosh. Well, can you tell us like what it's like a like a day in the life of you <laughs> yeah for sure oh my gosh it's probably not as exciting as it may seem <laughs> um you know I wake up I have my coffee I check emails <laughs> walk my dog um I do try to do some type of movement every day whether it's for 10 minutes or an hour um you know, I, I've definitely struggled the last couple of years with um, staying on top of my training because before I was teaching 15 to 20 classes a week. So that was my training. I was like always on it. I had no choice, but to be motivated and also find the time when you're running an online business to move is really challenging. So I've been a little bit kinder to my body as I've gotten older and now I might wake up and not feel great. And as long as I can do a little bit of movement, I'm like, okay, I at least moved today. We're good. I don't, I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. I used to be really aggressive with my training and endured a lot of injuries because of it. I would push myself when maybe my mental state wasn't there, or I would push myself when physically my body was not okay. And then I would just end up causing additional injuries. So, you know, I try to move a little bit every day and, um, it's weird. I have much more free time to socialize. And so I'm really into going out to eat. <laughs> like, I love getting dressed up and going out to eat. Honestly, I'll do it even by myself if no one else is available. It's a really sweet luxury that I cherish because I never used to do that. I used to be so busy teaching and so exhausted that I would live my entire day at the studio, come home and just crash and then wake up and do it again. So these days it feels weird to have more free time, but I try to fill it with the things that I really enjoy. It was just incredible for 15 to 20 classes a week to now live in your best life. It's so <laughs> And getting that is other like artists. Goal. Yeah, yeah, giving artists the opportunity to teach, you know, I didn't want this platform to be all about me. And in the beginning, it was because I didn't have the means to pay other instructors. So it's nice to give other artists that, that space and, and platform to do what they love and kind of sit back and, and watch. <laughs> awesome. wow. well, while you were saying your, um, like your, your uh your day <laughs> yeah um I was thinking about how I wanted to ask you how long it takes you to choreograph because you yeah it seems like you have so many chore 
choreographies. <laughs> Dances. Yeah. And I, it's just like so much. And how do you find time to be creative and innovative? Because you always are. Always. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much for saying that. So it depends. It really depends. Um, sometimes I can do it in 15 minutes and sometimes it takes me days. You know, it, it really depends on kind of my, my mood. Um, also, I've been really challenging myself lately to be like fill the space um, in between movements. And one thing that's really gotten me into that state of mind is, you know, taking more commercial dance classes versus pole dancing classes. When you take a pole dancing class, um, you know, there's time in between the transition where you can just kind of like flow. When you're on the floor, you want to fill that space and it not just be like move and then next move and then next move. So I'm trying to like listen to music differently and create movement that brings out sounds in the music that you wouldn't hear otherwise without that like intricacy or accentuation in your movement to really pull that that sound out. And so I would say my floor work pieces take me a lot longer than my pole pieces. Pole since I've been doing it for like 12 years, I can create a routine and like you know, 15 minutes, but I will say I'll create the skeleton of the routine in 15 minutes. And then I will obsess over the song. I will have it on repeat for days and I'll imagine the routine in my head and I'll just keep adding on to it. And, you know, so that I can also save my body and not destroy it by like working on the choreography over and over and over again. So, um, hopefully that answers your question, but yeah, anywhere from 15 minutes to like two weeks. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be like, oh, I got so good at it that it just happens like right away. But <laughs> I guess it'll always stay very random between like, yeah. wow, this one came quickly or this one I will never finish. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's definitely pieces I started and then I just kind of lost interest and never finished. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then another thing I was thinking of too, like um, a lot of us who wear heels all the time. Um, how, how do you care for your feet? Like, is there any special regimen that you do? Cause, uh, I don't know like about you, but I'm getting bunions and it's really yeah. frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm constantly stretching my feet. Like if I'm just sitting on the couch or watching TV, I'm like stretching my toes or sometimes I'll like grab my foot and kind of massage the like ball of my foot and the arch of my foot. Cause yeah, our feet take a real, a real beating these shoes are, are intense. I, I will never forget. I was doing a, <laughs> I was doing a photo shoot in Venice and this woman was really angry about the fact that I was wearing pleasers and like was shaming me and the other girls I was with and just like cursing left and right. And the funniest part about it was she called our shoes torture stilts. And I was like, I cannot argue with you. <laughs> she was like you and your torture stilts. <laughs> That's actually really funny. funny. <laughs> George, you have know. gone through it. You have, <laughs> you have some stories. Oh my gosh. What is your favorite brand of torture stills? <laughs> you know, I feel like Pleaser just does it right. You know, um, I will openly say their customer service is not the best, but their shoes are just kind of you know, gold, you don't get much better than that. I've tried other pole brands and I do enjoy some other brands, but some of them are just a little bit rough on my Achilles. And so I always just revert back to pleasers because they seem to fit my foot the best. Yeah. Love that. Pleasers. We're going to have to make a torture stilts episode. <laughs> Maybe I should create my own brand and call them torture stilts. Yes! Oh my I would yeah. buy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you wearing? Torture stilts. By Claudia oh, Renee. And, and then, like, the brand could be the stilettos, like, always a knife or, like, a butcher knife or something. <laughs> yes! Okay, we're doing it. Partnership. I'm ready. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh so you have plus a decade of poe experience so i'm curious to find out what is your favorite poe trick and maybe like your poe nemesis that you're just like fuck this trick 
<laughs> oh gosh. You know, I would say my favorite pole trick is anything with a brass monkey. I just feel really comfortable in that pose. I love it so much. I always, anytime I freestyle and I'm going up the pole, there's going to most likely be a brass monkey in there somewhere. And, um, I love doing brass monkey to, I don't know if you guys know what the tornado flip is when you're like in a brass monkey and you go to the like flight attendant and you flip up. That is one of my favorite moves mostly because I fell out of it once from 12 feet up and I was determined to make myself not be scared of that move. And it took me a couple of years, but now I love doing it. <laughs> oh, and gee, that's, I've, I know that pain. <laughs> I'm working on it. And oh my gosh. <laughs> it is, it is tough. I would say my nemesis move, gosh. Um, I mean, maybe Rainbow Marchenko. I've done it maybe twice, but you know, it just requires so much intense flexibility that it's like a nemesis, but a nemesis I'm not really interested in working on. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I can't even imagine that one. I'm not a backbender at all. Really? <laughs> yeah. You move so like gooey and flowy. <laughs> it seems like you have plenty of back flexibility. Uh, I'm a forward bender splitter all day. <laughs> yeah. <Absolutely. laughs> I kind of want to ask, how did you get that? The, uh, the, the tornado. From the, yeah, the tornado fit from the flight attendant back up to the brass monkey because I love it and I cannot do it and I want to do it what it's helps you do it <laughs> there's you know a couple things that really change the game for me is number one in the flight attendant having your hands really close to your chest because if they're too low and you try to flip up you can't reach the pole and that's when you end up falling so that's number one hands really close to your body in the flight attendant so it's less of a reach to grab above your leg once you flip to an upright position and then the second part of it is a lot of people, when they're doing the flip, they're aiming for flipping into the pole and that makes you lose your knee pit. If you flip with your chest slightly rotated away from the pole, your knee pit stays connected and you can keep that like external rotation in your hip that keeps the knee pit locked in. So those ah! are the two, two keys. <laughs> I love oh, I didn't even I'm not on mute. <laughs> I didn't know I'm not on mute. You heard all that. That is okay. Yep. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about because I twist towards the into the pole. pole yeah, causes me to lose that knee hook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep that Thank chest you. open in a way. <laughs> Keep it open. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Claudia, <laughs> you're so funny because you were like, my favorite performance was the one where I stabbed myself, and my favorite <laughs> trick is the one that I fell out of from twelve feet. <laughs> <years." laughs> I think I like to torture myself sometimes. <laughs> Dexter, fan. I, I, I realize now saying those things out loud kind of make me sound like an insane person. <laughs> oh, it really seems like, you know, they, they're really meaningful to you because it took a lot of energy and like effort. Absolutely. <laughs> Adrenaline, <laughs> blood, all the things. Yes. <laughs> it's like an alchemy of <laughs> concoction <laughs> of favorites. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> well, um, let's see. What what is your favorite pole grip that you like to use? So I'm sure people are gonna hate me for saying this. I don't use pole grip. I somehow don't need it. I don't know. I was blessed. <laughs> I knew we would find the polar. <laughs> there she is. People get so mad because new students will be like, so what grip baits do you use? I'm like, Oh, I don't, I just don't. And I definitely did back in the day. And I was always a dry hands girl. I loved it. Um, that other stuff like I tack was really not great for my body. I know it works really well for other people's bodies, but it seemed to kind of like leave pockets of grip and pockets of slip. So it was really scary and not consistent for me, but I know people who just absolutely love that grip. Um, so I would say if I used a grip, it would definitely be dry hands. Um, but I also was really determined to train myself to not use grip because I noticed that when I used it, I would get like mad calluses on my hands. And because I don't use grip, no calluses, none. <laughs> it's the grip because it's drying your hands out and then adding friction 
and that's what creates the calluses. But if you don't have grip on your hands, there's less less friction and pull. <laughs> I need the grip though. <laughs> I think it also depends on where you live. You know, if yeah, you that's live in, like fair, a yeah. humid climate or really dry. You know, if I lived in like Colorado where it's cold and dry, I'd probably need grip. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh but don't, don't hate me, people. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. We always talk about like, there's got to be someone who doesn't wear grip. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find them. And here you are. <laughs> here <I am. laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> uh, so what are your plans for the future? Any pole plans? I know you have a tour coming up. Anything at all? Yeah. So um, I'm kind of playing with the idea, and this is just the beginning stages of an idea of opening up a place in Vegas that is a performance space for mostly pole dancers. Um, you know, like they can come in, they can show off, they can dance. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jumbo's Clown Room in LA. It's like a really famous bikini bar. And, you know, those type of vibes. So we'll see what happens there. But for me, I, I definitely see myself always being a pole dancer and always being involved in some capacity. But I also see myself living multiple different lives and switching careers. And, you know, I, I've, I've always been the type of person that like needs constant change and, you know, maybe I'll open a restaurant, maybe I'll open a club, maybe I'll you know, go off the grid for a year. I don't know. <laughs> kind of see what life brings my way and go from there. But I really enjoy just diving into like new, new realms of, of movement and new spaces and seeing where I can go with them. But I think it would be really fun to open up a space in Vegas because there's nothing like that that exists in Vegas. There's strip clubs everywhere. But first of all, they're all owned by men. So having a female owned strip club esque bar would be so cool <laughs> please do that and then we'll open like open change of them around so we can all participate <laughs> yes should we call it torture still yes! <laughs> yeah. I have love a display it so in every have a display in every store not store um every restaurant strap that we open oh <laughs> yeah now we're, now we're talking gift shop i'm seeing it now i love it gift shop, there you go. <laughs> yes claudia i love it that's yes. exciting <laughs> i mean claudia do you have any advice for beginner pollers yeah um i would say be patient with yourself be patient with your training regimen um I, I have like a little bit of a teaching philosophy or training philosophy rather, where I, I like to film and then watch and that's part of my training process. So, or part of my training practice rather, where I spend a lot of time dissecting the movement, seeing where I want to make changes rather than like exhausting my body and doing it over and over and over again. I think with you know, social media and all the things that people see and they, they just get incur it discouraged so quickly. And so I would say like use social media sparingly and use it as a motivation tool, but try not to get discouraged comparing yourself to other people, because that's, what's so beautiful about pole dancing. Everyone has a space and whether you are an advanced polar or somebody who's literally never danced a day in your life, there is a space for you. And that's what's so beautiful about pole. So just be patient, always listen to your body and, you know, record yourself. It's really important. Some people get really nervous about recording themselves, but I think it's such a great tool to advancing because we need that mental practice just as much as we need the physical practice. And, um, you know, even for me, like watching videos, of myself or other pole dancers, that movement will slowly start to integrate into my actual practice. Maybe sometimes I'm not even aware of it, but if I watch something multiple times, I'm like, oh, that's right. I didn't even realize that this movement that I just put into my choreography was based off of this movement that I saw, you know? So it's a good, it's a good tool because then you don't exhaust your body and you can save yourself from injuries. 
Yes, I'm, I'm really glad you said that training philosophy because that, that's so true. I think it's called like kinesthetic awareness or something. When you watch yeah. the dance, your brain is actually like feeling the, yes. the way that it's moving, especially if you watch yourself and you're like yeah. witnessing yourself as the mover and your brain is like making those connections. Absolutely. It's so important. I love that. Kinesthetic yes. awareness. <laughs> yeah, it might be something else. I'll have to look it up. It kinesthetic <laughs> something. I need to know. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you for sharing that advice for pullers too. Of course. Because a lot of times they are too afraid to like, you know, videotape themselves. They're always like, is this okay? Like, it's always okay. <laughs> it's always okay. Film away. Yes. We recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well Chris I think that was all of the questions that I had for Claudia I am looking back at them now as well goodness we went over a lot um yeah I would you ask for any tips um and advice for beginner pollers do you have any tips and advice for any I guess people who want to start making pole their career, making money somehow, making it in a business with this somehow. Any yeah. tips on that for the advanced poller who just wants to make it their lifelong dream and make money that way? Absolutely, yeah. Well, I would say, number one, um, be confident in what you can offer to the community. I feel like so many people get stuck in that like imposter syndrome phase and think that what they're offering to the community is not good enough compared to all these other pole dancers who have been in the industry for so long. And had I let that stop me back in like 2000, probably 12, when I had my first mini tour, I would never be where I am today. So, you know, be clear and concise on your teaching style, understand what kind of teacher you are, be clear and concise on what you can offer to the community. Um, you know, find your niche market, uh, try to stick to, you know, like for me, I evolved in, in base work. I used to do all these crazy tricks and be known as a trickster, but I always loved being at the base of the pole. And I let other people try and force me to do things that I didn't really care to do. You know, like a lot of people are like, oh, well, to get recognition, you got to show that you're strong, acrobatic, sexy, can do low flow, can be a dancer, can count, can choreograph all of these things. And I exhausted myself for so many years trying to be all of these different things. And my success came from me finally just honing in on base work only and being like, you know what? There are other instructors out there who can teach tricks way better than me because that's their passion. So I'm going to focus on just this. And that's what helps people like me pull the people in that resonated with that part. And if you're offering 10 different things, people are confused. They don't know what you're offering and you've got people coming from all over and, you know, just, just honing in on that niche market, I think is the best advice that I can give someone and, you know, doing your due diligence, making sure that you understand anatomy, making sure that you've done your research um, and making sure that, you know, you're teaching from a place of authenticity, um, you know, not going through like, I don't want to go through a rabbit hole of something completely different. But you know, there are some instructors out there who I've seen kind of create these like toxic environments, and not just in the pole community, but just in general, where, you know, they'll teach students. And then when their students get better than them, or they advance, and they want to then go be instructors, they're offended, and they're upset about it. And that's, if that's the way that you're teaching and that's the space that you're coming from, then in my opinion, you probably shouldn't be a teacher. <laughs> you should definitely reevaluate your career path because, you know, as an instructor, I think it's one of the biggest honors to have your students surpass you and then go off and do their own thing. And we can't be, be offended as instructors if they're taking what we've given them and we've taught them and they've invested in and in going to teach it to other people you know, they're going to digest certain information that we give them. And they're going to also regurgitate that information in a different way that resonates to them. So, you know, it's not, it's not our information to keep and not give to others and then be offended if they go and share it. You know, for, for me, it's like, if you're paying for a class, you can take my information, you can do whatever you want with it. 
And um, I think that's an important space to be in because it just exhausts a lot of energy when you're so concerned about what other people are doing with your information, you know? Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's, it's really important too, because like you said, we all take the information and we regurgitate it in our own way. So it just keeps evolving and it's never gonna be w exactly what what you had anyway. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. One of my students might take some of my information and explain it in a way that's way better and I learned something from them. I've had that happen on several occasions where I'm like, hey, I really liked the way you said that. One of my, um, I used to have like a, uh, mentorships at the studio I used to work at. And one of the girls I taught, it was so cute. Her first class after I trained her for like maybe six months, um, she said something that really resonated with me. And then I started using, she was explaining to a beginner class when they grab the pole to not wear your shoulder as an earring. And I was like, how cute. I love that, you know? And then like, I started using it and I was like, Hey, thank you for that. Cause you know, different verbiage works with different people. I can say the same thing in class over and over again, and it never resonates with someone. And then they can take someone else's class, teach the exact same thing, say it in a different way. And they're like, ah, it clicked. So yeah, I thought that was really cute. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sometimes just that one little magic thing that you need to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Claudia. This has been so amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, my pleasure. Thank, thank you all for having me. <laughs> yes. Is there anything that you want to share? Anything you want to market um, to listeners? I know we're going to share yeah. all your links that you provide us, but anything you want to <laughs> let them know about? Yeah. Come take a class of team-based work. See if you like it. Ask us any questions you might have. Um, we are actually launching a new site any second now. It's going to be brand new, easier to navigate, more user-friendly. I'm super excited about it because I think it's just going to really um, be an easier process to both sign up for classes and just enjoy more diversity in our community. So um, yeah, come take a class with one of our instructors and hopefully we'll see you on the virtual dance floor sometime soon. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank we will have that both. link at the bottom. Yay. Yes, we'll show Thank the link. <laughs> it was great talking we'll... with y'all. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yes. And, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again in the future when you open. Was it torture still? <laughs> torture still yeah. coming 2025. <laughs> Or if you come to pull in the wall again, or I want yes. to make my way over there for sure. Yes, we need <laughs> yeah. to go all over, yeah. If you come to Vegas or LA, let me know. I would love oh that. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> now I have a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. It was great talking to you. Yeah. Yes, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our, our sign off now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Nandy Mac. <laughs> and I'm Chris Rivers. <laughs> Do I have the sticker on? Okay, thank God the sticker's off. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> <It's> too funny. <laughs> like, we'll edit that out. <laughs> edit it, please. <laughs>